Greetings everyone, TJB Chris here. Welcome back to the channel. Thank you for joining me. Tonight I want to share with you a not so recent acquisition, this Radio Shack TRS-80 color computer. And this was an eBay find. It was the whole lot was 70 bucks plus 70 bucks shipping, which might sound high, but it was actually for all you see, not television of course, but everything you see here. Machine, Black Beauty joysticks, CCR81 cassette recorder, blank cassette in packaging, stacko cassettes, some in packaging, some not with software on them, color scripts it, another version of scripts it for me to play with, yay. These cassette labels with a realistic branding in original packaging unopened, and this manual for the game Madness and the Minotaur, which did not come with a machine. The Black Beauty joysticks are the aluminum handled ones even. Look at that. So tonight I'm going to walk through exactly what I got with this machine real quick, and we're just going to power it up and kind of put it through a little bit of its paces, but nothing too fancy. So let's get to it. All right, first up, first two bonus items. We got the original box for the cassette recorder. Um, one thing you might notice as I walk away from the camera and come to the camera is my voice doesn't change. And that's because we also have an upgrade here on the TJB Chris YouTube channel. I invested in a lavalier mic and a wireless one at that. So hopefully this normals out the audio issues. Anyway, back to the box. More interesting than the stupid mic. CCR81 box for the cassette recorder. Includes great descriptions on the side designed for use with TRS-80 computers. Save or load programs to cassette tape. Includes special cable. Capitalized for connection to TRS-80, Q slash review, and tape counter to quickly find programs, assuming you know where they are, LED data record indicator, doubles as a battery indicator, built-in AC or uses four C batteries, not included, made in Korea, back of box, nothing, other side of box, same thing, bottom, top. Included in this box was the original styrofoam, and the cable and the cassette recorder itself and the power cord and also the manual. So this manual, it's an early CCR81. This looks like the Model 1 style of manual. So the TRS-80 microcomputer system hardware. And this is 26-1208. And it's got the standard CCR81 manual. So that was a cool little addition. In addition to that, we have this box for the Black Beauty joysticks, including the aluminum handles. $24.95, which in, does this tell me when it was made? It doesn't. Okay, does the joystick tell me when it was made? It does not. All right, fine. I don't know when they were made, but um, in 1980-whatever dollars, $24.95 would probably be a lot more like 80 So either way, very cool. This box was actually not um, propped up. It was folded down, and the joysticks were actually elsewhere, but still... Very neat and a nice little addition to the collection. And finally, but not finally, the box to the color computer. And I say finally, but not finally, because there's stuff inside the box. And as they say in UHF, let's see what's in the box. In the box, we have another bonus, a dust cover for the color computer. So this is gonna need a little uh, cleaning treatment, but it's actually in really good shape, and this was a neat find. It's contoured to the shape of the color computer for your comfort. Random plastic. Not sure what this is. Um, if I need to paint something. The RF switch with the adhesive on the back and the uh, adhesive protection. Um, this thing I did try to run it does not work well, but who cares? Oh, we're not going to use it. This is not factory with a machine, I'm pretty sure, but it is a Tandy cable. This is a, a Phono cable, and it actually, I don't know if you can see it on the camera. Probably not. It has, no, you can't see it. It has the Tandy Corp logo. This is a Tandy wiring cable. Cable, it was made by Tandy Corp, their wiring cable division. And then we have this, not color computer, uh, we're not manufacturer provided, but color computer related. Color computer programs for TRS-80 model 1, 3, 16K level 2, and TRS-80 16K color. And this is apparently packs from B. Erickson in Chicago, Illinois. Um, very cool. And on the back, there is a very handy dandy ASCII hexadecimal to decimal conversion table. Courtesy of B. Erickson of Chicago, Illinois. 
Then we get into the good stuff. Um, not that that wasn't good stuff, but we have a pristine copy of the reference guide for the machine. And this thing really is, I mean, it's seen a little use, but it's in great shape. So very happy with that. Error messages in the back, special characters um, for basic, I should say. But uh, copyright 1981 by Radio Shack, the biggest name in little computers. Then we have the requisite operation manual. This actually also in excellent shape, seen a little use. It has a little bonus page in here. We'll, account, we'll deal with it in a minute. But it is actually um, not so colorful, but colorful. It's got some green. And it's actually the, basically the same manual they've been using over and over again through the years. It's just in different form factors. In fact, the Color Computer 3 manual for some of this is word for word the same. But it is very cool and is in very good shape. All right, on to the addendum. This included an addendum uh, to note the fact that Color Basic 1.1 has enhancements, and one of them is you can use the 8-bit printer option. The fire button on the joystick no longer shoots characters across your screen. And under Color Basic 1.0, apparently the screen didn't display an S for search or F for found when the computer encountered an ungapped file on the cassette. It does now. And you now have a full 255 characters and data files without having to worry about losing any information. So apparently there were some issues with Color Basic. And then we have the next manual. This is Getting started with Color Basic, and it apparently was fairly well used, but it's in very good shape. And again, just uh, your typical Radio Shack whatever. Sorry, I've got the screen set backwards here so I can see myself. And with our dancing computer cartoons and the obviously excellent Tandy manuals at the time. And just like the other manuals, a lot of this shows up in the downstream manuals for the Color Computer 2 and 3. Uh, maybe not in the same order, but a lot of the examples are the same. So, very cool. And there's another little bonus item in here, if I can get to it, which is a calendar entry or calendar page from August of 1978. Xmas start, 10 ends 15, roulette start. So this looks like a uh, ledger for one of the cassettes. So we'll just leave that where I found it. And finally, Going ahead with Extended Color Basic, and this is an earlier version of the manual. Again, color pages, all the good stuff, well, green color pages, so not devoid of color. But reading and writing, edit, delete, yeah, all sorts of great stuff. Notes sections, which I haven't come across any notes yet, but who knows. But either way, this is uh, in excellent shape. So the whole machine came all in one package. So. Well, 70 bucks plus 70 bucks may seem a little extreme. I was actually really happy with the purchase. And now let's actually plug it back in and we'll power it up and do just a little bit of exploring. All right, we are set back up. I even went so far as to put the dust cover on it just because um, I haven't cleaned it up yet, but it's very cool. And it's actually very uh, form fitting. I guess you would call this a hip hugging dust cover, but it does fit very tightly. I don't know if it is, um, shrank over time or if it just was never really broken and didn't see a lot of use. But either way, it is here and it's going to come back off and we're going to power this thing up. All right, here comes my usual and requisite apology for static shop, but that's how we're going to play this game. So this is a color computer powered up. It is unmodified, so it's using the RF modulator, though I am not using the RF switch box. I've fashioned a cable with an F-type adapter to connect directly to the OutTTV port and we're powered up. It's not perfect, but it's actually not terrible. As I understand it, this machine is not compatible with the Coco VGA. Um, at least that's my interpretation of the site. If I'm wrong, please let me know. I'd love to think about that. Um, and I have to look into RF modulator options. This is an eboard Coco, and I'm going to go into some of the details about it momentarily, but um, with that, I've got to see what my options are in terms of RF modulation and breaking it out into composite video so I can avoid this little moray pattern that's going on here. So anyway, let's take a look at the machine. The keen-eyed observer may have noted that the RAM badge said 16K of memory, so the first thing we're going to do is type question mem, and of course we get 24871. So at the very least, we're dealing with a 32K system. So one thing I didn't do on camera, um, but if you'd like to see the innards, perhaps I can do that, is I took a look inside the case to see what kind of memory upgrades, if any, have been done. 
and I came across a lot of bodge wiring and otherwise. So I broke out my June 1985 copy of Hot Cocoa Magazine, where they talk all about memory, the ultimate upgrade. And specifically the 64K modification revisited article. And what I found was that I have to jump because magazines to page 54. Thanks for that. I swear somebody's laughing at me now that worked on this damn thing. But either way, here we go. So this article describes the different machines. 64K eboard um, tells you there's a moderate upgrade and a whole bunch of jumper wires. It turns out that I did see these jumper wires intact. So the RAMs are replaced. Uh, the jumpers are all set to 32K. Um, various capacitors have been removed and there are also some bodge wires moving about. But the machine seems to work just fine. So by all writes this is a 64k system which is something we'll test later in the meantime let's actually take a look at one of the programs on cassette and so what i'm going to do here is my top cassette which has already been prepared and rewound is this radio shack branded cassette cassette is labeled with a z but in here we see that it is in fact zaxon now i'm doing this without having done it before today i've done it in the past Let's see if it actually loads. And we're going to push play, and we're going to push enter. Cassette is moving, and I think there's quite the leader here. We're not going to stand here and watch this entire cassette load. Once it finds the program, I'm just going to cut to the part where it's done. We'll save you a speed up with a flashing F. Fun though that may be. There's Zaxxon. All right, we'll see you on the other side. Well, looky here, it actually worked on the first try. I swear there was a cut to spare you having to watch a flashing F, but it actually did work on the first try. Let's turn off the tape to avoid pancaking. And what the heck, let's rewind it. Fun fact with the CCR81, one of the neat things is even though the motor is controlled off, the cassette recorder can do tape movement even though the computer's not commanding it on. So while it won't play or record until you hit C load or type motor on, and I apparently almost knocked the joystick off, it will in fact go back and forth, which is why you should use a Tandy computer cassette recorder over any of the other crap that's out there. Okay, love Chris. So now that Zaxxon is loaded, let us give it an exec. Clearly someone's been screwing with this. This is obviously a pirated copy because it is copy wrong. So, well copying is wrong by swashbucklers. Um, if one of the swashbucklers is watching, feel free to comment on the video. I'd love to hear from you. Um, Terrible Tom, who the hell is that? For the Candy Corporation. Now, the official Zaxxon screen looks nothing like that. Let's take a look. All right, so here's my Coco 3 running Zaxxon. Obviously, it's on the RGB monitor, so there's no artifact, so it's straight black and white. But if you'll notice, it's copyright by Datasoft, game graphics by Sega, all rights reserved. The Candy Corporation actually said programmed by Steve Bjork, the legend. So this is what the program should look like, you know, maybe with some artifacting if I wasn't on a CM8. You know, a CM8 with a door. Uh, but anyway, I just wanted to do the little comparison. So apparently someone's been fudging around with the title screen on this one, which reads as such. All right, I suck at this game, so we're going to move on to the next piece of software. All right, well, Zaxxon wins slash loses itself, and then it's going to get all the way to the end of the level, and it's going to crash itself into, into the wall. Let's take a look at our next program that's going to be Color Scripts It. So we're going to eject the disc from the cassette recorder. Or eject the disc. Yeah, let's do that. Let's eject the cassette from the cassette recorder. And I was already kind and did rewind. We're going to just put that back in its thing. And I'm walking around the camera. And hopefully this microphone isn't bumping things. I'm new to this lavalier mic, so if it's bumping my shirt and making all sorts of god-awful noises, I'm going to have to do this again. Anyway. Color scripts it. Let's do it. Now, I have Color Scripts at 2 on Program Pack, which I've never actually officially run on camera. And Color Disk Scripts it. Actually, maybe I did. Was it part of my Scripts at 4 incarnations? I don't think it was. Um, I did an, a video about Scripts at incarnations, which I guess I should revisit. Maybe we'll just do Color Scripts at incarnations and visit those. If you'd like to see that kind of boringness, those of you who watched my Model 16 Scripts at videos, uh, let me know. I actually might consider doing it. It might be kind of fun, if not short and interesting. 
All right, so this is Color Scripts It by Robert G. Kilgus, who is of Color Disk Scripts It fame, and probably Color Scripts It 2 fame. And obviously it looks very much like Scripts It. So let's see, well, change standards. They're already pretty low, so there's not much to change. Text width, 32, which for this demonstration will be fine. If I had a printer, I'd change it to 80. Margin size, zero. Lines per page, all capitals, no. Okay, well, great. Oh, incorrect reply. Enter when done. I'm sorry, my reply was incorrect. Let's clear the memory, just so we don't have to look at the Candy Corporation. And we're going to edit text. And I imagine, oops, oh, it is. I am -E. This is in lowercase mode. Obvi, this machine does not have true. Actually, it's a little behind, but not too bad like a gimme or 6847T1, but nonetheless, it still rocks the boat. Oops. Just like the Hughes Corporation. Yes, 1974 called, they want their joke back. That scripts it. Uh, you can, as is typical with program pack versions. Oh, I forget. How do I get out of this? Um, clear. So since I can't remember how to get to the menu, I stumbled on it once. Um, and I don't have the manual, and I'm too lazy to look it up. We're just going to say, yep, you could save this masterpiece to cassette if you want, or not if you don't. But I think we're going to move on to something else. And actually, I, there's a bunch of other software on cassette that I could get into. There's... Um, Actually, what's the game called? The game is called Saigon the Final Days. Yes, yes. Um, and it does run. It appears to be a Zork-like text adventure, like so many of the era, that actually... Um, I did play a little bit, but I don't have any documentation for it. So um, I don't know if I've seen it on the archive or not. So I'll have to look and see if there's documentation there. Um, if it's not on the archive and anyone wants it, I'll make a WAV file of it. Just let me know. Um, so what we're going to do next is we're going to take a look at something that requires 64K. All right, let's break out my Coco SDC. This is actually my second Coco SDC because you can never have just one, just like Lay's potato chips. So we're going to use this Coco SDC to actually run OS 9 level 1 on here and exercise the 64K. So let's do that. Turn off the machine first, and this machine has 12 volts to the cartridge port, so you'd be wise to shut it off before you go jamming stuff in the slot. Okay, power up, and we're going to take a directory of slash on the SD card. There's my OS 9 level 1 version 1 ammo master. I don't need the boot disk because I have disk basic 1.1 1 .1 via the HDB DOS ROM. Oops, zero. I don't want to type load there. B1M, and we're going to issue the DOS command. So this is OS 9 level 1 version 1.1, as indicated by the screen there, copyright 1980, Motorola, and the machine is working. Take a little module directory here, and we have the typical modules, actually that has the descriptors for drives 0 through 3. It also has the descriptor for the RS-232 pack, and the T2 device descriptor, in addition to T1 and P for the printer. And that's pretty much it. And if I take a look at the disk, which is D0 in this case, and I will look in CMDS to see what's there. And interestingly, I never played with level one much. I think I, on my Coco 3, had one or two level one programs, but um, never appreciated the difference enough, and it wasn't a full distribution of level one anyway, uh, to realize that there's no error command here. But if you look in the sys directory, there's an error message file. So there's that. Uh, yep. Path name not found. No children. Ain't that the way. No children, and I represent it. Um, known module. I always wonder how you generate some of these. That seems like fun. I, illegal SWI code, I feel like with the assembler, would be fairly easy. Wrong type, device busy, disk change, RAM full. 
um, illegal number, illegal operator, oh, you're talking about me, and missing go to, those look like basic 09 type errors. So anyway, so that's pretty much it. This is the TRS-80 color computer. Um, like I said, I really just kind of want to go through a little bit of a walkthrough on it. I've had it for a couple of months and meant to do something with it. I don't know what I'm going to do with this quite yet. Um, the price I couldn't pass up and having a Coco 1 in addition to my Coco 2 and however many Coco 3s I've got floating around here I thought was the right way to go. Um, this might actually join my game night um, set of machines that I use for when we have friends over and drink beer, eat pizza, and play games. And perhaps if I can get myself a nice CRT television to go with it, I might do that. But um, otherwise, you will see this again. It's in really good shape. The palm rest only has a little bit of wearing of the gray paint. And uh, it's a great early model Coco. But that's pretty much it. I don't plan to do much with this machine in terms of modifying it. The keyboard is not changing. The Chiclet keyboard may not be uh, my favorite to type on, but it is period correct for the machine, and I really like it. Um, lends itself to the character of the computer. Uh, it's already upgraded to 64K by some previous owner. The only thing I may do with it is I may do a composite video mod so that I can make use of it without the video being too funky. But honestly, this isn't too bad. So all things considered, I don't know. BS to gratification ratio, we'll see how it goes. Um, the Black Beauty joysticks will accompany it because they are part of the Coco experience if I use it for game night. All right, thank you for watching. Until next time, this is TJB Chris saying stay classy.